Oh my god, I just got done doing that amazing Spider-Man audio review and it was terrible. Hopefully I can edit it down, which I haven't started yet, and make it better than what it is. I just destroyed that review. <laughs> I Hopefully I got my point across, but possibly not. Well, anyway, uh, moving on. So this is Mr. Peabody and Sherman. And this is an unexpected review because I've actually just recently seen this movie. And I noticed that a lot of people haven't been talking about it. Like, it actually had a lot of advertisement at first. I guess I should start from the beginning. Mr. Peabody and Sherman, or should I say Mr. Peabody's in Tascope Emporium, was actually a cartoon segment that used to appear on the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. It was in the late 1950s to early 1960s. And, for the most part, I actually did watch it. It wasn't really all that funny, so I guess that's one thing that the movie has a leg up on. It was just basically just teach you about history and just throw in some little jokes here and there. It wasn't really long segments, so I wouldn't know why something like this would warrant a movie over more so than Rocky and Bullwinkle. Okay, I'll admit that was a terrible movie. So, as far as something that actually is connected to Rocky and Bullwinkle, this is really good. Um, it, it took place, of course it took place even in the show in its own universe because they was uh, short segments. But I would say I have actually really enjoyed this. I think it's a cute movie. <laughs> Let me just put that down. I think it's a really cute movie. Okay, so uh, Mr. Peabody is a dog whose intelligence isn't really explained. It's just basically he has the genius sense to not only talk but to read and write and work on computers and do a whole bunch of other stuff that n no possible way a dog should do and in a world where there's actually no really magical elements to it for the most part this world is our world but there's just this one talking dog out of all of them that's it wasn't explained in the cartoon either so let's just go with it um, so you have Mr. Peabody this dog who's adopted a boy named Sherman. Yes, the dog adopted a boy. Yeah, you get the joke there. And he's officially his adopted son. The movie is aware of how weird that is and they do make jokes about that and it's kind of a little running gag in there. Every time somebody would bring up their relationship, they'd be like, he just adopted him. It's an adopted relationship. And everybody's like, oh, okay, well, that, that's fine, that's fine. Well, anyway, um, Sherman is actually starting his first day of school. I guess he was homeschooled before? That's not really explained. Anyway, so he goes to school and he actually impresses people enough to have not only friends, but impresses the teachers to the point where they're like, oh, okay, you know, this kid definitely knows his stuff. He gets the jealousy of a girl whose name I actually cannot remember. Hold on, I'm gonna make a quick edit here. Hopefully I can uh, search her name. Penny Peterson! Why can't I remember that? That's so easy. <laughs> okay, so there's this girl named Penny who uh, grows uh, jealous of Sherman and for, I guess, speaking over her or showing that what she knew about George Washington, because there was a question about George Washington, whether he chopped down the cherry tree, whether he said, I'll never tell a lie and things like that. And it turns out he didn't say that stuff as according by Sherman. So... Penny gets pissed off and she starts bullying him, making fun of him. They get into a fight and Sherman bites her. And then we go into the main plot, which is child services and how they want to remove Sherman, uh, well, take away custody from Mr. Peabody because not only the fact that he's a dog, but the fact that they just say, oh, well, you know, you're a bad father for letting this happen. Really, just one incident on his first day of school, it's... It seems like it was just a normal thing to do, and even people admitted that, well, Penny actually started the fight first. But Mr. Peabody is going to have some people against him because he is, in fact, a dog. So what does he do? He actually invites the family over, the little girl's family that just got bitten by his son. So he invites them over, and um, of course they talk and everything, and the parents do the parents thing, then the kids do the kids thing. At first they hate each other, and Penny just cannot get over the fact that he knew something about George Washington that she didn't. 
And she's like, well, how did you do that? He's like, well, we have a time machine. After specifically, Mr. Peabody tells him, don't tell her about the time machine. This time machine is called the Wayback. We don't know how it's invented. We know a little bit about how does it work. And this thing is freaking indestructible. I'm telling you, it can take being thrown in the water. It can be take being set on fire, being shot at. This thing is freaking amazing. This is the awesome time machine. And of course, they had it in the original cartoon. And with everything, they have to make it modern day. And for the most part, it basically just starts from there. There's just them going to like a series of different places and there seems to be mishap after mishap and that's where the movie gets kind of uh, not as badly with the subplots as The Amazing Spider-Man 2 but it seems to be okay you know there's a mishap happening here there's a mishap going on here it's like okay it seems like the universe is trying to tell you something there's a whole bunch of things going on to the point where the space time continuum has a riff. And I'm not going to go into any further than that. I'll just leave that to the imagination because that leads to the solution at the end of the movie. But as far as the movie itself, what do I personally think about it? Like I said, I like it. Um, I think it should possibly be talked about a little bit more. Now, as far as the kids' films that go on this year compared to something like uh, the Lego movie, which I think does it better... Uh, which I think was just an overall better movie. And I will still stick to that, that the Lego movie is so far the best kids movie or animated film of the year. This one is actually good. It, I think it should be looked at, even though that it's not on par with the Lego movie. It's way leagues above Rio 2. <laughs> Let me be honest about that, because I've seen Rio 2 as well. And I enjoyed this. I actually, I actually enjoy this a lot. Um, I like the characters. I even like the past characters. They run to Leonardo da Vinci. They run into the the uh, Trojan horse, uh, the invasions of Troy, and everything like that. They have to go through that battle. They go through the French, re re excuse me, the French Revolution, and it's fine. It's fine. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, these characters are funny. Mr. Peabody is. A great character, honestly. Every moment he was on screen, I loved it. The weakest I possibly thought wasn't actually Penny. Because Penny was the annoying, bitchy, instigative type of girl who is actually the love interest of Sherman. Yeah, they do. They do get that down. Um, she is his love interest. They end up, they grow up, they end up liking each other. Um, and it happens early on, so it's like a, there's a romance brewing there, and of course they're aware of it too. As well as there's this funny scene where she tells him um, they're actually working on the time machine, which actually got broken down during the Renaissance era in um, Italy. And so they're at Leonardo da Vinci's house, and they're actually working on a way to power the modern machine back up, like a battery. And... Sherman wants to help out Mr. Peabody because he's basically his adopted father. Um, he found him on the street, by the way. And Penny comes along and she's like, hey, you know, you want to go do something? He's like, well, I kind of want to help out my dad. And she's like, okay, let's be honest. Do you want to help out your father or do you want to go and play with me? And he just says, well, okay. And I'm just like, oh, wait, wait movie hold on a sec okay number one these characters are seven years old that little girl and i don't know how old the voice actress is but that little girl is not supposed to know the power that she has over guys yet okay <laughs> um at least she's supposed to be in high school before she realized that okay you know if i just put on a little charm i can get a i can get a male to do anything i want and women know they have this power i was like this character is too young to know that <laughs> I was actually speaking with my mother about this, and I was, and I was like, um, uh, she she went to see something. She she saw something else. Uh, what did she see? I think she saw the Amazing Spider-Man two first. Yeah, she saw the Amazing Spider-Man two, and I saw went to see Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and I was telling her about the movie, and I was like, you know, this part comes up, and I'm just like, I don't. That's kind of a nod to adulthood. She should not be aware that she has this power over males yet, over men yet. And it's it's funny that they threw that in there. 
Uh, so besides that, yeah, she's a bit of the um, instigator. She kind of pushed Sherman a little bit. Um, but in a way, she's actually good for him because I wouldn't say Mr. Peabody kept them as a shut-in, but Mr. Peabody was more like, I don't really want to let you go. You know, you're, you're my son. So even sending you off the school was like a big step for me. So now since you have a girl that actually likes you, that's even a bigger step for me. And anyway, it, it's a cute little romance. Um, it does go somewhere. So I like that. I enjoy that part. So overall, the movie is very beautifully animated. These are some very nice scenes. Um, action sequences, as far as showing the landscapes and everything. The character models seem to be like a fusion of wreck and Ralph as far as the... Um, the Sugar Rush Racers, as far as for the kids, and The Incredibles. So there's definitely a Pixar Disney animation influence there. I don't know whether that helps the film or hurts it. That possibly would hurt it a little bit because financially it was a little unsuccessful. It made a good bit of money back, but they considered it financially unsuccessful. Well, that's what happens when you put all the money into that. Uh, it's also is a DreamWorks film, and they their animation has always been pretty good. Uh, so I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed um, the animation. I thought it looked beautiful. Uh, they use a variety of colors in this movie. Very nice. Um, the way they make places look. Troy looks pretty good, even though that's done at night, and we rarely get to see it. Italy looks nice, and the modern day looks awesome. I actually enjoyed the movie from beginning to end. There were some jokes that, or I should say most of the jokes that didn't work, although it was a good movie, I would say I wasn't laughing as hard as I was, or as hard as they probably wanted me to be. So, um, hold on a sec. Yeah, this has been going on for 12 minutes. So, that's Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Um, I apologize that I had to rush with this review. I, there's some other movies I have to get to and some other reviews I have to get out. Okay, so um, as far as rating, rating, uh, three out of four. Three out of four. Um, I really enjoy this movie. I think it's worth checking out. And if you want to know more, check in the description box where I put my little overall thoughts on the movie. Okay, so I love you guys. See you in the next one. Take care.